this is a brand new T Deck Plus, and I'm going to be flashing the Chatterbox software onto it and getting it uh, set up. So I'm going to show how to do that. Um, first, if you don't have a formatted SD card already, you need to put one in there. So I will plug it into the computer. So I've got the other end plugged into my USB, I think. By default, these, at least for the moment, whether you get them from Amazon or LilyGo, um, comes with this software Meshtastic already on it. That's not what I want to use, so I need to flash it. So what I'm going to do is turn it off, hold down the trackball button, turn it back on, and then let up. So now this is in a special boot mode that makes it ready to accept a, a new, some new firmware. Now that you have the device hooked up to your computer, uh, go to the firmware flasher page. You have to be in Chrome or certain browsers. Some of the more secure ones don't, don't support this. Pick whether you're inside or outside the USA. I'm testing a different international device, so I'm choosing outside the USA, but if you are in the USA, make sure you pick this one. The flag over here will tell you if you've got the right one. Um, see, I've got, normally, if you're in the US, you want to see this flag. Otherwise, you don't. Okay, so I go here, and I'm doing the T-Deck Plus. Uh, so I'm going to select that say connect and it should show up um, this is going to look different on windows or mac um, this is a linux so once i've found my device i will say connect and this takes sometimes this takes more than one try uh, so i'm going to say install that this should take a minute and when it says erasing, it's not erasing the SD card. It's just the the flash memory of the device. So if you if you already had an onboarded device with an SD card in it, doing this flashing is not going to affect any of that stuff. It's just going to give you the new version of the firmware. Okay, so it says it's done, and it it will say that it's restarting the device, but it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm gonna have to go over, turn it off, and turn it back on. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. The new firmware has been flashed onto here, so I did have my SD card in, so that should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing off, and on these off is up, on is down. Okay, so once I turn it back on, hopefully I'll see the Chatterbox logo, yep. And if you're in the U.S., you want to see strong there. If you're not in the U.S., you want to see the word export. I'm in a basement, so sometimes it takes a minute to find GPS. So I'm, I'm going to pause the video while it does that. Once you have got this thing successfully booted, um, if you've... If it's the first time you've ever done that uh, and you don't have a license, then it's going to pull up this screen where it's prompting you to get a license. And what you do is use your phone and scan that QR code. And that's going to take you to a page that explains how to, how to do that. And you'll end up with a key that you can type into here. So you... Follow those instructions, uh, get your key, and then you can either touch the QR code or you can touch this pencil, and then you'll be able to accept the terms and enter your key. So I'm going to get my key right now. Okay, I got my key. That just took a minute. Um, and since the key is on my phone, and I, I went ahead and wrote it down so that I can type it in while I record okay so i personally do accept these terms so your key is just going to be all letters like this you don't have to worry about uppercase lowercase 
There's spaces here. You don't. You can put them in if you want to. You don't have to. G A B H space D D E E B E F D Oops D A G D Got it. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, so if that's all right and I choose check, it should kind of freeze there and then restart and and now I should have a licensed device, which is a one-time thing per device. Oh, I may have to take it upstairs again to get the GPS. Yeah, I'm going to pause the video while I take it to near a window. Okay, I've got my GPS. The GPS thing, you really, you just need the GPS signal to for it to start up. Once it's started, if you can leave it running for forever and it doesn't need another GPS signal. It just needs it that first, uh, when it first starts up. So I'm back down in a basement and it's going to work fine even if I, even if I don't have a signal down here. Okay, so I'm not going to password protect it since it's one of my test devices. Um, you pick your time zone. I think the other device that I am going to pair this with is in uh, Sydney's time zone, so I'm going to pick that. Not that it, it matters. Okay, I don't even remember what I named the other one. So I'm going to call this International 2. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it a cluster name called My Cluster. All right. So if you are in the United States, make sure you choose 915. If you're not in the United States, you need to find out which LoRa, L O R A, which LoRa frequencies are okay in your country. So it's probably either going to be 868 or 915. So make sure you choose the right one here. And the center frequency, if you don't know what you're doing from that point forward, just the defaults are all okay. Um, I'm going to choose the defaults. And I'm going to choose the 64 channels. Rotate every 100, 100 seconds. And it should restart here and I should see it on my new cluster okay so that worked and now I can see I've got this new device INTL2 sitting alone in its new cluster called my cluster and it's the root device so from here I could either uh, add other devices to this thing's cluster, or I could add this thing to another cluster, or both. 